In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, simple being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Like newborn infants, alleluia, 
long for the pure spiritual milk of the word, Alleluia. Sing aloud to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. In distress you called, and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. And with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and that will be, will be world without end. Amen. Like new infant, newborn infants, alleluia, long for the pure spiritual milk of the word, alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament for quinquagesima, or it, for quasimodo genitai, is written in the prophet Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, there were, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, 
and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath, or breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a sound and behold, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone and I looked and behold, there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. He has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. Alleluia. Eight days later, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Alleluia. The epistle is written in St. John's first letter to the church, the fifth chapter. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is He who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. And there are three that testify, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that He is born concerning His Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning His Son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. On the, e on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the door being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, 
we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands, or see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The apostles were a joke. They were a joke when it came to being holy men. Holy Scripture withholds none of their foolishness, their doubt, their betrayal, their unbelief, their failure to be faithful in their duties as apostles, evangelists, and pastors. The most well-known example of such failure is St. Peter himself. He makes great and profound confessions of the faith, indeed. But in the next breath, he would make demonic and destructive prohibitions against Jesus and his plan of salvation for all mankind. Jesus calls him a rock, a rock of faith, but he also called him Satan. In the upper room of Easter evening, the, room, the same room in which they, a few nights previous, ate with Jesus and partook of his very body and blood, there in that room the fear of death by Jewish mob was real and palpable. They feared. They feared for their lives. They could have endured the same fate that Jesus did. And to add further anxiety, the women who went to the tomb earlier that morning were claiming that Jesus had risen from the dead. If that were true, which the info was suspect considering who it was that was making the claim, Mary Magdalene, a woman of the night. If it was true, if it was true that Jesus was indeed raised from the dead, if it was true in their minds, Jesus up and about couldn't be good for them. Couldn't be good for them considering that they deserted him on Holy Thursday. So they were. They were locked up in fear for their lives which when you think about it, is really to already be dead. They were so crippled by their fear that they stopped living their life and stopped believing that they were cared for by the Creator. The God of life was forgotten and replaced with, well, nothing. For the opposite of life is death. And death is nothing more than the absence of life. It's like darkness is the absence of light, and cold is the absence of heat. The apostles were for all intents and purposes a pile of dry, dusty bones in the shadowy valley of death. Now dead things cannot do anything but lie there, be dead, and smell bad enough to choke to death an elephant which only adds to the situation and makes it worse. When you're dead, there's only one hope, to receive life. And the only way to receive life is when it is given to you from another, one who is not stopped by doors or walls or smelly graves. Peace be with you. Jesus, with perfect timing as usual, manifests himself in the midst of the disciples. He interjects himself into the darkness of death and brings life. Peace be with you. He brings peace that undoes, that makes impotent all that terrifies, all that kills, all that condemns you. He was dead, but is now alive bringing not vengeance, but peace. Peace be with you. Peace that none other can make or give. He forgives sinners their sins. Peace be with you, indeed. True and lasting peace does not come from below, but above. It is the peace of sins forgiven, forgiveness that you have been given in the still waters of holy baptism. Waters that wash dry bones with the new birth and renewal of the Holy Spirit. The prophetic and apostolic words of God breathe life into you 
through your ears by means of preaching and teaching. You are fed and nourished in faith to continue believing that you belong to Jesus, His body and blood. The very body and blood that is given to you in that supper for the forgiveness of your sins. Peace be with you. You are prepared. You are given life, not just temporal life, but eternal life. So fear not. Those apostles who cowered behind those doors that night would not always be cowards. In Christ's forgiving word, they were changed, breathed on, and given the Holy Spirit. The gospel would become everything to them, and with the Spirit's inspiration, they would boldly proclaim the word, the gospel, to a world of dry, dead bones. They would proclaim that word of life even Jesus Christ crucified and risen from the dead. And for their faith, they would receive the very thing that they feared the most that Easter evening. However, at that time, at their end, they joyfully and confidently received a blessed death unto eternal life. You see, dear saints, they did not fear death anymore because of the gospel. Because they had already died in Jesus through those holy waters. They were baptized. They had already been drowned to death. And so the second death was but a portal to eternal life and the promised resurrection on the last day. A resurrection that had taken on flesh and bone in Jesus. Their confidence is yours as well. You are baptized and you believe and you have died with Christ already. You will also then rise with Him as He promises. Believe it. Peace be with you. For Jesus' sake, you are dry bones no more. Go. Live your life as forgiven saints of Christ, no longer to live in fear. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ is risen. Indeed. Hallelujah. We stand. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name, that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and His kingdom extended, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church throughout the world and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, its mission and its people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work God has given us to do, and for the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the educational institutions of our synod, for our preschools, our day schools, and high schools, our colleges and universities, and for our seminaries, that those who teach and those who learn in them would be transformed by the wisdom of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who partake this day of Christ's holy body and blood, that in their eating and drinking they may receive the benefits of forgiveness of sins and the renewal of life and have a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have wandered from the faith, that the Holy Spirit would use us to call them home to the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. For the government and all who have been set into positions of leadership, that they may use the authority entrusted to them honorably and for the good of the people. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who serve in worthy occupations, professions, arts, and sciences, that God would grant them skill and integrity in the performance of their responsibilities and valued service through their vocations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love would re preserve and relieve them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the faithful, that the Spirit would lead them to cheerful, generous giving from the bounty the Lord provides to support the church and to help those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, especially Renee Knuth, Betty Leek, and Pete Asmussen, that God would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who mourn, that in their time of sorrow they would not lose hope, but rely on God's promise that He will never leave them or forsake them. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who rejoice in the rich blessings of God, that they may always remember the giver of every gift and give Him heartfelt thanks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of Your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in His victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from His ascension before You, where He ever stands for us as our own High Priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in His kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to You alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ the very paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world by his dying he has destroyed death and by his rising again he has restored to us everlasting life therefore with mary magdalene peter and john 
and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
body price given to you. 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 Body price. Now that your body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you with the one true faith throughout this life and the life to come, we bark in God's peace, your sins are forgiven. stand. give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
One God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and to be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen, amen, amen.